Hey guys, Stark of Cyclone FPV. Sorry, I'm getting some new equipment installed here, so may have a few glitches in this video. Uh, I'm gonna make the video pretty quickly. It's gonna be actually a series of videos. First one's gonna be on the assembly of the uh, uh, the Alpha RC, the fighter, uh, the F140 that we have on our website. Um, I, so check this if you see anybody outside. Sorry. Uh, so a customer asked me if I was to use this, what components would I do to build this? What would I use in building this drone? So I figured, you know what, let's do a video on it. Uh, this drone will be up for sale actually, so when I'm done, um, I'll put together the price and everything and you'll find it on the website after the video is done. Uh, so what I was going to do is here's the drone right here. Here's what the frame is going to look like. Uh, but this is our display. So I'm not going to use this one. I'm going to actually just build another one that we can watch that and we can take it from there. Uh, so here's what we're going to do. We're going to go ahead and use a split screen here. Boom, boom, boom. There you go. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and cut this open and we're going to get started. Man, I can't find my scissors. Hold on one second. Be right back. All right. Here they are. <clears throat> okay. All right, there we go. It's a pretty easy frame to build. Um, I, I just got done actually, I know I built one of these uh, live a couple days ago when I was testing out the um, the Zeus 35. Ooh, hold on, that's my wife that just text, text me. Excuse me one second, please. Let me see what she's up to. I will tell her I'm in a live build here. Sorry guys. I wanna make sure my Text doesn't get on camera. There we go. Okay. All right, but family first, folks. You know how that goes. If my wife writes, I stop everything to respond back to her. Love that woman to death. All right. So uh, we did one of these builds, and so um, it, I, I did the build with the uh, the Zeus, the thirty five, the new thirty five Zeus from HGLRC, and it was a good build. I was very pleased with it um, as far as it fitting and everything. And now it's time to actually do a build again, but this time I'm going to use the F440, uh, 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 the HRC F440 uh, stack, mini stack, okay? So let's just look at what we've got here. And try. I'm trying to keep my desk clean. I've done about 12 drone repairs uh, in the last two days, and um, there's a bunch of stuff all over my desk. But here goes. All right, so we've got our screws, our standoffs. Uh, let me get all this cut open here. There we go. Okay, and I'm gonna get ready to toss all this, there we go. Okay, so when we built this one right here, right, the one thing that I did, let me make that screen, is that I kept the um, I kept the arms on the inside. Now, uh, during that discussion in that build, I said, well, you could probably put them on the outside on the bottom too, and I stand firm on the fact that I think you can, I don't think that'd be an issue, but uh, I'm gonna see if we can fit the stack in here the way it is. I don't know if it's gonna fit, that's the problem. Um, the amount of room allotted for this is going to be uh, roughly, uh, oof. yeah, it's pretty narrow. So that's going to be less than what I'm going to need. I would think that we might have a problem here. So I'm probably actually going to build this with the arms underneath this time and see if that actually pans out. Okay. Because we need about 20 millimeters, right? Cause you got a gap from the bottom and then you got about a four millimeter stack. Uh, you got, sorry, gap from the bottom to keep the ESC from hitting. Uh, and then you've got the ESC and then you got about four millimeters ESC. Let's give one millimeter. So that's five. Then you've got the flight controller and then another four millimeters plus five controllers. So that's five. So you've got about three, 10, that's 13. And then you've got the VTX and you've got a fastener on top. So give it another five. So that's about 18. So I would say safely you need 20 millimeters. And if I'm not mistaken, this thing is going to come in just in shy at being at around uh, 15, 16, right about 18. So I don't know. It's going to be kind of close. Now, if I look at other stacks, I did get this stack. I did manage to get this stack to fit on one of our builds. But if you look again, I mean, it's it's very close, especially when you start counting that you've got the display from the VTX right there. Uh, so you're at 15, 16, nah, it's not gonna work. I need 20 millimeters. So just to be safe and make sure that we've got a pretty clean build, we're gonna go with 20 millimeters, which means we're gonna put the arms underneath, okay? So here's our frame. It's the front, this is the back of the frame, as you can see from here. All right, and I'm gonna put this one, I guess I can put it right here for reference if you'd like. There, all right. So that being said, I've got to make sure that this is going to fit somehow and also make sure that these screws don't penetrate through the top and still leave a lot of clearance for this. So ideally under the way, the way I'm going to do this, uh, my hope is here that, let me grab the stack real quick. Here is, here's the flight controller. Okay. So we're just going to work with that right now because that's the easiest thing to work with here. So let me grab this flight controller and let's look at how we're going to set this up. So, um, our flight controller will sit something like this. And that being said, it literally has no, none of these fastening screws are gonna go through that. 
So we're gonna to try to put this under here and see if we can clear this somehow. So let's give a shot, all right? Uh, and the idea is that these arms need to face just like that. And we're gonna put the bottom plate underneath, just like this. Let's see if we can make this work. All right, I'm hoping we can. I believe the screws are just long enough or just short enough to not go through uh, the, um, the fastener here. So the countersunk fastener, so let's see. All right, yeah, so that's gonna be good. So if you look at what we've just left there, um, it looks like we're gonna have enough room because we're still gonna raise the ESC, uh, and I'll pull the ESC out here in a second, but we're gonna raise the ESC and the standoffs should keep it from touching that area, but that's about enough. That's about two millimeters. Uh, let me make sure. Uh, yeah, it's, uh, well, no, it's uh, between one and a half to two millimeters. All right, so let's go ahead and finish the assembly now of the frame. And again, then we'll stop this video and then we'll come back with part two. All right, and, and again, if you're a student and I'm putting this video together, uh, the students, you guys are gonna get this as part of your curriculum. So if you have any questions, please uh, make sure to send me an email if any of this doesn't make sense to you. If you happen to be building one of these 145s, now uh, you may not be using the same flight controller, but you can at least start with the, um, with the video on the uh, assembly of the frame. And I've gotta find the right arms here, so hold on one second. All right, so let's see if we can get this to go through. All right, there we go. Let's go ahead and screw that down. And guys, uh, I will also mention that I did uh, have read for the third time now uh, the FAA's proposal, and uh, I am going to give my opinion on it here um, and also on some of the things that I've read online. But I think that uh, I will tell you, and I'm not trying to deviate from what we're doing here, but I will tell you that I do find that there's a... There's a there are a lot of misunderstandings, and it doesn't mean I'm uh, in agreement or not. I think there are things on both sides, arguments on both sides that make sense. The problem I have right now is the delivery, the method of delivery that's being done. I mean, you've got, you've got guys that are just basically, I hate the government, you know, screw them for trying to take away my rights. And I'm, I'm, you know, and I don't think that's going to win anything over either. And at the same time, I think the government has to understand that, you know, people are obviously sensitive to it. But at the end of the day, um, at the end of the day, I think the delivery... If the delivery is not right, uh, then I think the message, it doesn't matter the message. So I really am hoping that there can be some work on delivery instead of just bashing, uh, because the way I see it, um, you know, we have an opportunity to make something positive come from this. Uh, and I really think the possibility is there, but if, but, but we've got to stop, people have to stop, uh, you know, responding like the government sucks and, oh, how dare they do this? I mean, they have a job to do as well. And the job, obviously, they don't have an easy job sometimes. And, uh, and from what you see on the news, they deal with a lot of stress too and a lot of people threatening them and a lot of people just not pleased. And I think some of that luxury of expressing that comes from the fact that people know they're safe and secure to be able to say that. But at the same time, these guys got families too. These government workers go home to families and kids and wives and husbands and they deserve the same uh, opportunity that we were you know, that we ask for, which is to be heard, to be respected, uh, and understand that I don't think anybody's got it out for any one individual or group, but I think that the groups that are speaking out like this need to really take into consideration that there's a human being on the other, other end of that receiving this, and it, they probably just want to be talked to properly with respect. Now, that's an opinion, but it's the opinion I'm taking, and it's a stance I'm taking. So I'm going to address it and give my opinion because obviously a lot of my future and income and you know success or failure will depend on uh, may depend on some of this, uh, but just as much it also may depend on how people in the drone community respond to the FAA, and so I ask everybody to just kind of chill a minute and really read it. I just I printed it again yesterday in a different format. It was 127 pages, but most the I think the last. 10 pages or so are just referencing definitions and things, which I really think people need to read because there's a lot of misunderstandings there. All right, and we'll continue about that later. So, But let's all just agree that, hey, you know what, we're going to respect everybody at least a little bit better than we have been um, by not cursing at them every five minutes. Uh, okay, so what I've done now is I put the arms underneath, right, as you can see that right there, and hopefully that's going to get us enough space to get to, uh, to reach this. Now, I believe these standoffs, if I'm not mistaken, the standoffs are going to be 20 mil. Uh, yeah, they're going to be 20 mil. Well, they're a little bit they're a little bit taller, they're like an odd number, like 22. Um, um, and in this case, they seem to cut pretty accurate. 
which means that the carbon fiber has to be spot on. Now, when I get to a point where it's like tough to fit in the slots here, then what I'll do is I'll just put the standoffs on. So here's what I'm gonna do now is, and this is mainly because I have to put this together anyway. But what I'll do is I'll put the standoffs on on the bottom, right? And then I'll just bring the top down. So uh, let me get this done here. And if you hear the barking in the background, that is my, I have three Yorkies and four pit bulls or three pit bulls, three Yorkies in one lap. Well, the Yorkies are going crazy on each other right now, so I apologize, but uh, I can't seem to shut them up and uh, I'm not gonna make an issue of it right now. They're pushing my patience as it is already. All right, so let me just get going here and I will uh, add the rest of these standoffs and then we'll go ahead and fasten the frame down and that will be the end of that. And I, I can tell you that some cases you won't have to worry about uh, sanding it. I have probably, it's probably a 25, well, maybe a one in five chance that you might, but just have a nail file there and just be careful, uh, you know, sand it. And the purpose of that is again, I don't want to splinter the carbon fiber. And, uh, and sometimes, you know, the cuts are really close because carbon fiber, like I said, it's, it's laid, it's sheets, very thin sheets laid together with resin placed and then, you know, it's cured, right? And so sometimes one sheet can be a 10th of a millimeter. And, uh, and in doing that, they could be one sheet off or it could be a little thick or whatever it may be. So just have patience with that. But uh, nonetheless, it's in here now and this is going well. So let me go ahead and finish this one up. And then we can stop the video and then get to the second portion of adding the flight controllers. Okay, now again, this is with the arms put underneath. And one thing you're gonna notice, ooh, I made the mistake here actually, if you look at this right here, you're gonna see that this standoff is actually shorter than the others. This is meant for the um, top here, between the camera mount. So let me take that off real quick. Be, be, uh, be aware of that. I did that last time when I built the one sitting right here too. And I meant to keep a watch on it. So you may wanna set that one aside. That's just one um, standoff that's gonna be shorter than the other eight. All right, so let me put this. Let me see, is that my wife that pulled me in? Thought maybe that was her. All right, so here we go. And now we're gonna place this on. And again, it's the, because this carbon fiber is about 2.1 millimeters thick, um, it's fitting in these slots really tight. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna press it where it needs to go. And then I'm just gonna screw the, um, the uh, standoffs down and try to basically bring it through the slots and we should be okay. So let me go ahead and get the um, screws going here while my dog's still barking like crazy. All right, there's one. And you'll start seeing it pressed through shortly. And then we'll do another one here. I hear somebody talking, I just don't see him. Hmm. Okay, let me just do this one. See, and that brought that through now. So it's, it's, it's in there now. And then we'll add the next one here. And that'll force the piece in place. Um, on the smaller quads that have more angles cut like this, you do see sometimes on the frames, you see this happen. Again, it's not a major deal. All you have to do is just be, you know, just wait, instead of fighting it and forcing it like that, you can just put the screws in and it'll push it right through. All right, so let me put this one in and we'll be just about done, all right? Let me do that. Okay. All right, we got, uh, what, uh, five more screws, I think. Uh, I'm gonna go get some, let me turn this AC on real quick. It's a little hot in here. All right, there we go. So we'll put the remaining screws back here.
go ahead and put that last stand off the shorter one. Now it's time to put that in place. You'll see that happen right here. And this is obviously where you can mount your camera. Um, and they've got a little a little camera strap here. So like a, was that about a 10, 15, 10, mil, 10 millimeter strap, let's say. And then let me put the last one in. And that should wrap it up. So looking at that, there's your frame, right? There's your, oh wait, you know what? I gotta put the batteries, let me put this on too. So as you look, if you look at this now, I remember in the last video I did, I didn't poke these center pieces out or these cutouts. If you bend this, you're gonna see them, right? So those come out because there's gaps here. I would definitely go ahead and do that now. So just go ahead and take your time to remove those because it's much harder to do afterwards. So let's just go ahead and remove those. And it'll also help you line it up properly on the top of the frame. Okay, let me take all these and throw them out. All right, guys, there we go. So now peel back your um, 3M adhesive here and just line this up just like this. All right, so line it up, make sure it's right, and then you're good. Press it down and you're done. Okay, so this is the original. The one that I used as the example to show you what we're building. Here is the one that we just built. Man, it's pretty solid. Everything on here is very solid. I'm very impressed with this frame. It's a very tight cut though. Like I said, the cuts are very, very tight. So be sure um, be sure that you pay attention to the fact that it, you, know, you, you may have some tight fits in these slotted pieces. Just be aware of it and be careful and uh, you should be good to go. All right, so with that being said, guys, uh, let's, let's change this out here. There we go. Okay, so that's going to do part one of this, right? So that's part one of the build. And I'm sorry I had to cut the video a little bit there. I had to get up and also tend to this frame a little bit. Um, so the next part is going to be actually adding the ESC and measuring this out. Uh, so uh, if you have any questions, hit me up at Tark at CycloneFPV.com. And please, as always, uh, follow us on Facebook and subscribe to our YouTube channel, please. Uh, I don't know if I did that too quickly. Other than that, God bless. Fly safe, guys. Spend time with your family. Never know how much time you have with them, so make the most of it. Okay, and we'll talk to you soon. Peace. Bye.